everyone. So, in our last video, we showed Hello World and we ran it through DOSBox, which was a pretty straightforward way of doing things. However, there are times where DOSBox might not work and you might want to test it out using another way. So the way we're going to talk about today is using the QEMU, still don't know how to pronounce that, one of these days I'm going to learn, um, emulator, and we're also going to use FreeDOS. So we'll actually be running FreeDOS on top of a virtual hardware in a virtual machine, and then we'll run our programs. So first off, let's make sure our Hello World program still works, because that could be important. So let's do a make, still compiles, and if we do make run, still spins up DOSBox, and we still get a Hello World. All right, so that worked out well. If you don't know where any of this came from, it's from the last video, so be sure to check that out. Now, to actually uh, get uh, QEMU to run, what we'll need to do is we'll probably need to install it, right? So. We'll come in here, and I'm using Linux Mint, which is a derivative of Ubuntu, which is a derivative of Debian. So I use apt. If you're on a different Linux um, distribution, install it with the distribution that uh, you're familiar with. Um, yep, that's all I got to say about that. Anyway, though, here I'll hit tab and uh, the one we're going to want is going to be the system x86 because we are using um, x86 code here. It's your normal type of computer. You can see there's a ton of stuff in here for testing out ARM and testing out um, power PCs and a little bit of everything. What well, we care about x86 in this case. All right, that's been installed, and it looks like my Linux distribution is out of date. Looks like I'll have to do that later. Always something. Oh, they're automatically installed. Ah, okay, there's always time for cleanup later on. Anyway, back to the topic on hand. Let's look now at how we will run this with QEMU. So, Let's start typing in things here. QEMU dash system dash x86 underscore 64. All right, that will allow us to actually run uh, QEMU. And then after that, we're going to specify that we have a drive. The format will be raw. And the file is, hmm. Well, we need a file, don't we? So let's go out to our friend, the internet. And if you go to freedos.org slash download, we're going to download the light version of FreeDOS. So it'll download that nice and quickly. And it does come with a virtual machine image, which is also helpful, but we're not using VirtualBox. We're using a different one. So we'll actually use the IMG file and here is the folder that our project is in. Let's just drag that into there. Okay. And let's go back to Visual Studio. So now our file was fd13light.image. And let's just run that once and see what types of things it gives us. So if we do a make run, we can see it's booting up FreeDOS, doing a bunch of stuff, and oh, isn't this wonderful? So we get to pick our language, uh, English, and then we'll say, no, we do not want to actually install it. Now, can you install it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you don't want to have to do this every single time, I'd recommend installing it, and maybe I'll do a video on that down the road so that uh, you don't have to do this every single time because that would be a little annoying, I can imagine. But anyway, here we go. And our CD-ROM, quote unquote, which is that image that we're using is on the D drive. And if we try to go to the A drive, 
Uh, there's errors, so that's always good. If we try to go to the B drive, it says to remove the diskette in the A drive, which we just didn't have, and insert one into the B drive. I don't quite understand um, why FreeDOS does it this way. I mean, if they were going authentic, I would have assumed that FreeDOS would be on the A drive, and then the B drive is what we would be using, but anyway, I suppose C drive is common for all the Windows users. If we go to the C drive, that's where we are by default, and you can see that we have our command com and our other things that come along. If we go to the D drive, there's, um, it just says the drive's not ready. So um, we're gonna abort out of that. And if we go to the E drive, we just have a temp folder. So that's basically it. That's what we have essentially the C drive to work with. And as you can tell, our program is nowhere to be found in here. There's no hello com file anywhere. So, um, oh, that's funny. That doesn't quite work when you're actually in the machine itself. So we'll just close that. We need to find a way to be able to actually use our com file here. So let's take a look at how to do that now. First thing we're going to do is we are going to create a directory in here or a folder if you would like, and I will call it DOS drive. Now we'll need to edit our run here and we're gonna include HDB, it'll be a fat. Um, partition, read, write, and then DOS drive. Okay. Now the other thing that we're probably going to want to do is actually by default move our hello.com into our DOS drive folder. So after we're done assembling it, let's put in a move command to move hello.com into DOS drive. So now if we run make, we can see that it ran our move for us. If we go into here, sure enough, there it is. Now let's do a make run. And we can see there's a C drive and a D drive that wasn't there before. Again, we will specify that uh, our language is English and we don't want to install it. Now, if we go to the D drive, we can see that hello.com does exist. And if we run it, we get our hello world. So what we've done is instead of running it in DOSBox, we're actually running it entirely in its own virtual machine and using FreeDOS. So this will allow you to test your programs in multiple environments to make sure that the code that you're writing is able to be run on DOSBox, which a lot of people will be using on Windows and Linux and Mac and all that. But also if for some reason someone's still running DOS, FreeDOS is quite compatible with MS-DOS and they can actually take that floppy disk that you're probably gonna make, right? Yep, that floppy disk and stick it into their computer and be able to run it from their DOS command prompt. So I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you like the content you see on this channel, please do consider subscribing. Uh, the way that the YouTube algorithm works from my understanding is all the videos that you view, it, YouTube kind of figures out what you like and then other people that watch those same types of videos, it will go, oh, you'll probably like this as well. So if you like this content and you want other people that watch the same types of videos as you to find it, uh, please do consider subscribing. It helps get it out to them. Also, if you wanna see more about DOS and DOS assembly and all of this type of information we're talking about here, please do consider hitting that like button. It lets me know to keep making videos on this. So anyway, we will see you next time.